In this video, we'll be going over the commonly used forms for writing the equations of lines. Specifically, we'll be covering slope-intercept form, standard form, and point-slope form. Let's jump right in. Alright, let's start off by discussing slope-intercept form, which is one way to write the equation of a line. The slope-intercept form for a line is y is equal to mx plus b. In this form, x and y are our variables. x is the independent variable, while y is a dependent variable. You can think of this as a function, where x is the input and y is the output, and the value of y depends on the independent variable, which is x. So x and y are the variables, and m and b are constants. Specifically, m is the slope of the line, and b is the y-intercept, hence the name slope-intercept form. All right, now let's focus in on the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the y-value at which the function, or the line in this case, intersects the y-axis. So if we have some line, then the y-intercept is the y-value of this point, the point where the line intersects the y-axis. Another thing you should notice about the y-intercept is that the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. So let's say this is some arbitrary line with the equation y is equal to mx plus b. We know the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0, and so if we plug x is equal to 0 into our equation for the line, we get y is equal to m times 0 plus b, m times 0 is 0, so the y-intercept for a line in slope-intercept form will just be b. So this point will have the coordinates 0, comma, b. Now that we've talked about the y-intercept, let's talk about slope. You'll often hear the slope described as rise over run. And essentially what that means is the change in y-value between two points on a line divided by the change in x between those same two points. So let's say we have two points on our line, one here with the coordinates x1, y1, and then another point here with the coordinates x2, y2. So let's say you were given these two points on a line and asked to find the slope of the line that passes through them. The slope would just be the change in y value between those two points, so y2 minus y1, so that would be this height right here, divided by the change in x between those two points, so x2 minus x1, which would be this distance right here. And the way I like to understand the slope is the following. The slope is the change in y for every unit increment in x. So every time we increment our x by one unit, we generate a change in y on the line, and that change in y is equal to the slope. So just to illustrate this behavior, let's take the line y is equal to 2x plus 1. And let's make a table to find some points on this line. So we'll have a column for x and a column for y. And let's say we choose three x values, negative 1, 0, and 1. When x is equal to negative 1, the y value would be 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2 plus 1, so negative 1. When x is equal to 0, the y value is 2 times 0, so 0, plus 1, so 1. And when x is equal to 1, the y value is 2 times 1, so 2 plus 1, so 3. This line is in slope-intercept form, so 2 is going to be the slope. And as you can see, every time we increment our x by one unit, the corresponding change in y, we get is always 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. And so hopefully that makes sense. Now, the final thing I want to touch on is the significance of the sign and magnitude of the slope. And for that, let's graph a couple of different lines. Okay, so here in the bottom left, we have three different lines. We have the pink line, y is equal to x, the green line, y is equal to 2x, and the cyan line, y is equal to negative x. Let's start off by just thinking about the slope for each of these lines. Remember the slope is just the coefficient of the x term, so for y is equal to x, the slope is 1.
for y is equal to 2x, the slope is 2, and for y is equal to negative x, the slope is negative 1. Let's start off by comparing these two lines. The pink line has a slope of 1, and the green line has a slope of 2. And you can see, as the magnitude of the slope increases from 1 to 2, the line gets steeper. And so the trend here is the greater the magnitude of the slope, the steeper the line. Now let's consider these two lines. The pink line and the cyan line have a slope with the same magnitude. The magnitude of both of their slopes is 1, and so both lines are equally steep. But as you can see, for the pink line, since the slope is positive, as x increases, y increases, so when you're looking from left to right, the line is heading into the first quadrant. But for the cyan line, when the slope is negative, negative 1, as x increases, y decreases. So as you look from left to right, the line heads into the fourth quadrant. And so the trend here is that when the slope m is greater than zero, when it's positive, as x increases, y increases, like we see with the pink line, but when the slope m is less than zero, y will decrease as x increases, like we see with the cyan line. And so those are just some things to keep in mind when thinking about the slope of a line. All right, now let's do these two problems to reinforce what we've learned about slope-intercept form. The first one says to graph the line y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. Now one way you could approach this problem is by creating a table for your x and y values. You could choose a couple values of x, find the corresponding y values, then plot those points and connect them, and you would have your line. But here's an alternate way you could approach this problem. Recall that the slope-intercept form for a line is y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. If we do a little bit of pattern matching, we can see that the slope, which is m, is the coefficient of x, so it's negative 2, and b, which is the y-intercept, is 1. We can first start off by just plotting the y-intercept. Since b is equal to 1, we know this line will cross the y-axis when y is equal to 1, so at the point 0, comma 1. Now we've established that the slope is negative 2. Now if you recall from the previous slide, the way I like to think about the slope is that the slope is the change in y you get if you increment your x by 1. We've already established that the point 0, 1 is on our line. Now when we increment x by 1, so when x is equal to 1, the change in y value between the point where x is 0 and the point where x is 1 should be negative 2. So if that's the case, then the y value when x is 1 must be negative 1. Because when we increment x by 1, so as x goes from 0 to 1, the change in y value between these two points must be equal to negative 2, since that's our slope. And indeed it is. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And so we know that the point 1, negative 1 is on our line. Now if, you wanted to plot an, now if you wanted to plot another point, maybe consider when x is negative 1. For our y value to change by negative 2 when we increment x from negative 1 to 0, the y value when x is negative 1 must be 3, since 3 plus negative 2 is 1. And so we know the point negative 1 comma 3 must also be on our line. And so we know the line y is equal to negative 2x plus 1 looks something like this. Since the slope is negative, it's negative 2. As we increase x, y will decrease. And specifically, as we increment x by 1, the change in y value between the points on the line will be negative 2. And so in this method, we started off with the y-intercept and then used the slope to find the coordinates of some nearby points. Okay, now let's move on to the next problem. Find the equation of the line that passes through the points 2, comma negative 3 and 6, comma 11. So let's try to find the line in slope-intercept form, so y is equal to mx plus b. To do that, we're going to need to find out what m the slope is and what b the y-intercept is. And when you're given two points like we are here, you always want to start off by finding the slope. So if you recall from the first slide, m, which is the slope of a line, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if we think of this being our first point and this being our second point, y2 is 11 minus y1, which is negative 3, and we divide that by x2, which is 6, minus x1, which is 2. 11 minus minus 3 
is 14 divided by 6 minus 2, which is 4, which simplifies to 7 over 2. So we know that m is 7 over 2, so the equation of our line is going to be y is equal to 7 over 2x plus b. So now all that's left is finding the value of b. And the way we're going to find out what b is, is by using the points they've given us. We know the point 2, negative 3 is on our line. So when we input 2, we should get an output of negative 3. So negative 3 should equal 7 over 2 times x, which for this point is 2, plus b. Now we only have one variable, so we can solve for that variable. Let's start by simplifying the right-hand side. We get negative 3 is equal to 7 over 2 times 2, so 7 plus b. Now if we subtract 7 from both sides, we get that negative 10 is equal to b. So if we put everything together, we get that the equation for this line is y is equal to 7 over 2x minus 10. And for these types of problems, if you want to verify that you have the right equation, use the other point they give you to do so. So we know when x is 6, y must be 11. So when we plug in x is 6, we get y is equal to 7 over 2 times 6 minus 10. 7 times 6 is 42, divided by 2 is 21, minus 10 is 11. And since we get y is 11 when we plug in x is 6, we know we have the right equation. Alright, so I've covered slope-intercept form in a lot of detail. And now I want to quickly cover point-slope form and standard form, which are two other ways to write the equation of a line. Like the name suggests, you use point-slope form when you're given a point on the line and the slope of the line. So let's say the point you're given on the line is x1, y1. And if you're told that the slope of the line is m, then the equation of that line written in point-slope form would be the following. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And so this is point-slope form. So let's say you're given a line that has a slope of 3 and crosses through the point 1, comma, negative 2. And you're asked to write this line in slope-intercept form. Well, what you would do is, since you're given a point on the line in the slope, you would first write the line in point-slope form, and then convert to slope-intercept form by rearranging this equation. So the equation of this line in point-slope form would be y minus y1, which is negative 2, equals m, which is the slope, so 3, times x minus 1. We can simplify this a little bit. y minus negative 2 is y plus 2, and that is equal. And y plus 2 is equal to 3 times x minus 1. Now that we have our line in point-slope form, converting it to slope-intercept form, which once again is y is equal to mx plus b, should be really simple. We want to isolate the y on the left-hand side, so we're going to subtract 2 from both sides, so we get y is equal to 3 times x minus 1 minus 2. And if we expand this 3 times x minus 1 term out, we get that y is equal to 3x minus 3 minus 2. So 3x minus 5. And so as you can see, we were able to use point-slope form to write the equation of this line in slope-intercept form. Now let's talk about another way to write the equation of a line, standard form. The equation of a line in standard form is the following. a times x plus b times y equals c. The first thing that's important about standard form is that the variables x and y are on the left-hand side of the equation, and c, which is a constant, is on the right-hand side. Now, there are a couple caveats to keep in mind when writing equations in standard form. The first caveat is that a, b, and c must all be integers, so they can be decimals or fractions. And the second caveat is that a, which is the coefficient of the x term, must be positive. All right, now let's do an example of this. Let's say we have the equation y is equal to 1 third x plus 1 half, and we need to convert it to standard form. And we need to convert it from slope-intercept form to standard form. Well, the first thing you want to do when converting from slope-intercept to standard form is bring all the variables to the left-hand side. 
So we're going to need to subtract negative 1 third x from both sides. And if we do that, we get negative 1 third x plus y equals 1 half. Now this resembles standard form. We have a times x, where a is negative 1 third, plus b times y, where b is 1, equals c, where c is 1 half. But remember, in standard form, a, b, and c must all be integers. So we have to find some way to get rid of the negative 1 third and the 1 half. The way we're going to get rid of the negative 1 third and 1 half and convert them to integers is by multiplying the entire equation by the least common multiple of the denominators of these fractions. The least common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6, so we're going to multiply the entire equation by 6, and if we do so, we get 6 times negative 1 third, which is negative 2, x plus 6 times y equals 3. Now there's still one step left. Remember, a, which is the coefficient of the x term, must be positive. And in our equation, a is negative, it's negative 2. And so we're going to be able to fix this by multiplying our entire equation by negative 1. And if we do that, we get negative 2 times negative 1, so 2x, and then 6y minus 1. 6y times negative 1, so minus 6y, is equal to 3 times negative 1, so negative 3. Now a, b, and c are all integers, and a is positive, so we've successfully converted this equation to standard form. All right, so that's all there is to this video. If it did help you out at all, please be sure to leave a like. And if you want to be notified when I post the rest of the videos in this course, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.